to show you in this video that using medication assisted treatment, I could bring the yearly overdose deaths of opiates or general overdoses, which are poly substance now, down to nearly zero. The main ingredient that's causing the overdose is the opiates anyway, so let's just call it opiate overdose deaths. I can bring it to near zero. And I'm going to show you how, or tell you how, in this video, using medication-assisted treatment. You're also going to find out that there's so much that you've sort of been misled about what medication-assisted treatment is. So let's get started. Uh, I'm Dr. B. This is Dr. B360. And uh, um, um, this video will be in the context of the recent videos I've made discussing euphoria, euphoric index, importance of considering euphoria in uh, substance abuse treatment and why it should be used to reverse opiate overdose deaths in the age of fentanyl. I've discussed <coughs> recently methadone and pharmaceutical grade heroin. <coughs> All of those go together and you don't have to have watched those to watch this, this video, but I think it will be educational and beneficial for you to go back. So let's get started. Medication-assisted treatment to treat a very difficult fentanyl case. It's gonna be a hypothetical case and a hypothetical world where I can use medication-assisted treatment as it should be and what it actually is. Let's start out with our real world. Real world. I got a 25 year old male comes into the practice and you know, I know him, I've understood him over time. I, uh, I really get the patient and where he's at and what needs to be done. We've tried several times to get him started on Suboxone and you know, for him, the fentanyl, the potency and where he is at in this stage of addiction, he can't make it to complete induction of buprenorphine, right? He just can't do it even Let's say I use my the methods I use, which are very much like the Bernese method. He just won't go more than a couple of days. What are my options? Well, uh, not much. Uh, we can do Vivitrol, which is going to fail in this guy. Or I can say, okay, go to the methadone clinic. Uh, um, uh, well, I don't have a methadone clinic now. I used to run one and be the medical director, but not now, I just have a private practice. So you're gonna have to go to the methadone clinic. He doesn't wanna go to the methadone clinic. And I actually don't want him on high dose or any dose of methadone for long term. He's 25 years old, he's a college student, he's finishing up school, he's got family, uh, and it's a very difficult road for him logistically. And I don't believe, <clears throat> My clinical intuition is once he gets on Suboxone and stabilizes after a couple of days, if he can make it through all of that, he'll do fine on Suboxone because he actually wants the shot because of school, the job he's going to get, his family. He doesn't want to be taking a strip or a pill every day. What are my options? Not much. This is going to be a difficult, crappy case, and this kid is going to have to go through all kinds of pain that is unnecessary. Now my hypothetical world. Again, comes into my office. I have my arsenal of medication-assisted treatment. My arsenal is a little bit different, okay? And same situation. We initially started to get him on Suboxone. We can't do it, okay? We got to save this kid's life. He's using way too much fentanyl, making bad decisions. At times, he's even sharing needles, even though everybody else seems to be smoking it. And he's kind of got a death wish. I got to get this kid stabilized fast so he's alive he's going to finish college smart kid great family for our purposes has very minimal other mental health issues comorbidities i know that he can succeed if i can get him on suboxone but let's just say stabilized on medication assisted treatment so what am i going to do in my hypothetical world well since I can't make that immediate switch for a whole bunch of reasons, variety of reasons, in my hypothetical world, what I'm going to do is, hey, you know what? We're going to get you started on methadone, low dose, titrated up, come off the fentanyl. Let's get this up. Whether that takes me uh, three days, four days, five days, it's going to take about a week, you know, wh whatever, especially with the methadone that we have in this country, which I've explained in another video, racemic methadone. It's a little messier, a little sloppier, 
a little more difficult to work with, more side effects, whatever. It is what it is. I'm going to get you on methadone. Let's get you off of fentanyl. So over the next few days to two weeks, I stabilize him on methadone. And let's say, you know, uh, 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 in his case, it's actually kind of high, right? It's uh, 80 milligrams. And that's not high. There's people well over that. But for my goal here is to get them off immediately. It's almost kind of like the methadone tapers they do in the methadone clinics here in this country, which has no evidence whatsoever to back it up. And it's a complete failure. I'm going to do that. But why am I going to do that? I'm going to get him up high on enough methadone, stabilize him as quickly as I can, get him off that fentanyl, get a few days behind me. And let's just say he's on 80, which would be too high for what I'm actually trying to do. I can do this much lower, but we're just playing. And the nuances of making these decisions uh, don't matter. And as soon as I get him off and get some time, a few days, a week behind me, it's usually even shorter from the fentanyl, I'm going to switch that methadone to long acting, slow release morphine, 12 to uh, 24 hour types, oral type, right? I'm going to stop the methadone and stabilize them quickly on that slow release 24 hour morphine, usually 24 hour. It's smooth. It's clean. Uh, it, uh, it's a, a f easy, fantastic transition. You don't have to risk precipitated withdrawals in any of those cases, because getting someone on methadone from uh, fentanyl, there's no risk of precipitated withdrawal, right? And since he's in my office, I can uh, do this quickly. And I'm very well versed and practiced in methadone. I can manipulate that thing pretty well, even with the fact that we have racemic methadone. So now he's been on methadone. Now I'm getting him under slow release or 24 hour uh, long acting morphine. He looks great and he feels great. I'm using oral, I'm using higher doses and he looks fantastic because why? It's a very smooth drug, right? It's clean. It's pharmaceutical grade, right? And, uh, you know, I, I would argue it's pretty close to what the addict may be looking for in terms of that. Uh, um, I'm not going to use the term high, but maybe that euphoria and it's not being high, it's feeling okay, a sense of well-being. If you see my other videos, that euphoria goes back a couple thousand years. It just means a sense of well-being and healthy. Once I have him on that, now I can start tapering down <clears throat> pretty quickly. And, you know, why do I want to go on Suboxone in his case? We've made that decision that, you know, we don't want to stay on full agonist uh, opiates for very long, there are many advantages to Suboxone. There's never really any chance of your uh, uh, tolerance going up, which is a small chance with uh, e even slow release long acting morphine. Uh, we also uh, uh, don't have to deal with uh, potential overdoses in the same way you would have to with the full agonist. And he also wants the shot, right? And so over a couple more weeks, I start to titrate that morphine down. I may even go to oxys, 30 milligrams for a couple weeks, uh, maybe longer, eventually get him to Suboxone and then do my micro dosing of bringing Suboxone on. Essentially, you know, this could take me uh, a couple of months, maybe three months. I have made that transition to the deadly poisonous fentanyl on the streets uh, that's illicit and it's garbage anyway, to medication assisted treatment without the patient really even having felt any pain or problems or issues or withdrawals. And then from there, all of the other long-term decisions would be made. This is what medication assisted <clears throat> treatment should look like. And in fact, it does look like this in many other parts of the world. I hope you enjoyed the video, got something out of it. <clears throat> Understand that medication assisted treatment is not Suboxone and Methadone. It is medication assisted treatment. And it could come in a lot more shapes and flavors than we offer in this country. 
This is not the place to discuss what the deal is and why it's that way. Give me a like, please, subscribe button, and leave your comments below. All of that helps with the channel algorithm so I can bring you more quality videos in the future. See you guys soon. Peace.